42. This is part two of the miseducation of Abbo. Part two, but let me tell you though, it's not really, I'm not really covering much that's that different. This is basically the same guy that was in part one, copper colored cuz, and I'm just showing where his school of thought comes from. Why is he challenging carbon date? And I gave my theory as to why, but I just want to show you where the school of thought is. And when I show this, let me just say that I'm not saying that he's biting. Uh, I think this dude's name is Kit Coven or something like, I'm not saying that he's biting. Okay. Pale cuz. This isn't like young Pharaoh, what he did with, I think it was Stefan Muller when he did that presentation where he basically charged people to miseducate them as usual. <clears throat> so this is to show you where this school of thought comes from. I had to get a little louder, adjust the mic. And that's really it. This is just a shared school of thought. I'm not saying that this is a complete rip. But one thing that I think his name is Hoven, Kent Hoven, I'm, I don't really follow him. I was just doing a little research because I had heard this stuff before in this type of argument when it comes to carbon dating. But the thing is that uh, copper colored cuz and pale cuz have in common is that they aren't really challenging carbon dating. They're challenging their straw man. I'm here to show you, tell you, explain to you. ATE. <clears throat> I am sure not that the world's expert on carbon dating, but I think I can explain things. I'm a teacher. I can explain it as best I can. That's what a teacher is supposed to do. Take the complex and explain it where the average person can get it. And so, yeah, since I operate about fourth grade level, you know, I got to understand it myself first so I, so I can explain it. Let me explain how carbon dating is supposed to work and then tell you the serious problems with it. And according to them in the geologic column, the deeper you go to... The geologic column game. is where it all started. <clears throat> we covered that on... All right. So now, the geologic column was based on the assumption that the deeper you dig into the earth, the deeper you dig into the layers of the earth, the older the fossils and the bones and the artifacts should be as you go down. Okay? Now, that's the geologic column. The problem with you saying that the strata... <laughs> Uh, we dig into the strata and based on, you know, how deep, how deep they are, then, you know, they determine the dates, which is the geologic column. There was no carbon dating when the geologic column was formed. So the, the terrible flaw in this whole dating method and then you coming out the window that's saying that the strata is uh, uh, where they start at is the fact that they are uh, the. Uh, uh, give me a second. Give me a second. Huh. So the, the problem, the assumption is that the. <laughs> Geologic, the assumption with the carbon dating is that it's supposed to match the geologic column, which came first. So, so they said the column, the deeper you dig, the older shit gets. And then later on, about 50, maybe 100 years later, um, they came up with carbon dating. And now they started verifying their assumption, saying that the deeper you dig, the older things get. And so now when we find anomalies where, uh, as they're using their dating method, they're, they will come back and change the dates and, you know, at their discretion. So surely it's true. <laughs> no, just because it's been taught 180 years doesn't make it true. But that's the logic those scientists will have. Well, we know the geologic column is established. Therefore, any carbon dates we get should match that. If they don't, we'll throw them out and we'll keep testing till we do. They might have to test a sample five or six times till they get the number they want. Well, how do you know any of them are right then? If you're getting a different number every time, how would you know any of them are right? Radiometric dating would not have been feasible if the geologic column had not been erected first. To recap, you must take a few assumptions in order to say that you know the date that anything was built, born, constructed, grew, or anything to that, uh, to that degree. The first assumption is that the, uh, the decay rate is consistent. The second assumption is that the amount of uh, carbon-14 that we have Probably right a now, reasonable assumption, and I don't argue with them. I just point out this is one of dozens of assumptions. Okay. 
this is that the can next enter into really two. mess up things like so carbon far, dating. Follow me. And you assume that you have the calculations correct. So now, and they say, so okay. probably so we you have, have 0. 0.000765% 000 carbon in you because you've been eating these plants or you've been eating the animals that have eaten the plants. So probably it's all balanced in, in nature. When the plant right or animal now. dies, it stops eating, stops have. taking in more C14, it stops breathing. Okay. Now whatever it had is going to decay. It was decaying while it was alive, but now there's nothing to replace it. So what they do is they compare the amount of C14 in the fossil with the amount in the atmosphere and say, wow, this fossil's only got half as much. Therefore, it's been dead for one half-life, 5,700 years. If the Earth had a canopy of water above the atmosphere, or a canopy of ice, as we cover on Seminar 2, that would have blocked out a lot of radiation from the sun, which would have prevented most of the carbon-14 from even forming. And this is the connection that they give to us uh, evolving and coming from uh, monkeys and coming from Africa, out of Africa, uh, globe Earth, heliocentrum, Big Bang, all of this is on the same timeline. I need you all also to understand that, all right? In 1970, at the Nobel Symposium, they said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop they it. They literally are able to change these dates at any point in time, whenever it does not work, and they are on the record saying when they find things that go against the current dating method or the current timeline, they throw it out. They 100% go against it. So I need y'all to understand, they are willing to tell you they don't give a fuck if the shit don't make no sense when we come across something that may have been polluted, diluted, uh, 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 or just maybe uh, something that, you know. I said, sir, I use Reader's Digest as a resource for the picture of the dinosaur bone, okay? <laughs> it's not the resource for the fact, okay? It's the, that's where I got the picture from. Oh, okay, okay. So we went on to the debate. But yes, dinosaurs ought to date, you know, 70 million years old. A Russian scientist dated dinosaur bones at less than 30,000 years old. Hugh Miller from Columbus, Ohio took in four dinosaur bone samples and said, would you carbon date these? And they charged like 600 bucks to carbon date something. They carbon dated them and said they're less than 20,000 years old. He said, oh, by the way, these are dinosaur bones. They said, oh, well, then they're not 20,000. We've got to test them again. Why can't they be 20,000? They said, well, we know dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago, so if you had told us that, we never would have carbon dated them. 1971, freshly killed seal was 1,300 years old when they carbon dated it. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to stop it right there because that whole thing about dinosaur bones, I don't trust it. I don't know it, but I don't trust it either way because... I don't see how it's possible for dinosaurs to have anything but fossils. If they're really hundreds of millions of years old, or I think 60 million might be the youngest, how the hell are they going to have bones? They would be de deteriorated. It, it, you wouldn't have organic material in that form. You would just have cast, which is what a fossil is. You would just have a rock. And you can't really carbon date rocks that accurately um, they're, they're just not organic enough they don't intake and they don't breathe and that's the problem i mean carbon dating is in a lot of ways based on how something intakes certain isotopes and it's not you know it's it's wild with rocks here you can do it with some rocks you can with certain i don't really know the science but that whole story doesn't make any sense at all because show me, I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Can you show me a real story? Not like somebody saying, oh, they carbon dated a dinosaur, and a fossil, a fossil, not actual bone, but a fossil. And then they say it's like 40,000 years because it's a, it's a fossil, you know, show me a real story on that. Cause that doesn't make any sense at all. The whole thing just sounds hokey as hell. Like they carbon dated bones well show me these actually show me a dinosaur bone show me a dinosaur bone not a fossil a simple question that i need everyone everyone i want everybody to grind this question into your mind when they tell you this is this many thousand million hundred thousand billion years old this is the question i need you to say how do you know okay 
can't I turn that question around and ask, how do you know the Kent Hovind school is correct? I mean, this is a dude that believes the Great Flood went down, and that animals will round up to the number. All the animals on this planet will round up and put on a boat. You know, like, I mean, these are people who don't even believe the slave trade went down because it wasn't enough evidence. But the, all the animals in a Great Flood went down? You know, that's the same school of thought. Because I, I can ask the same thing. How do you know? Have you tested this? Or are you just going with one narrative and it's a narrative that really isn't challenging carbon dating? Because there's a video out that talks about how carbon dating overcomes all of these flaws to get a more precise dating method. And that's the key. They're aiming for more precision that's already known. So they may be off thousand here, thousand there, five thousand here. The, the larger the number, the greater the range of error, because a lot of things occur in a consistent rate. Basic volcano eruptions, anything that, that can increase the level of carbon-14, it's usually at a consistent earthly rate. Earth is like a, a live entity, and even just the solar system itself, we receive a certain amount of uh, visitors in the form of asteroids and collisions, and those are relatively constant unless you have one that's exceptionally large, and then it creates a flux that can be seen. You can trace that pattern. Like I said, if you're going to challenge it, don't challenge the straw man, challenge it, because a lot of what they're saying, the um, if you really look into the alternative explanation not the kent hoven not the collared cuz but the the consistent science will say hey, we do have all these flaws this is how we overcome them this is how we substantiate them this is how we test them this is how we identify the anomalies and this is what we run with you know what i mean it's and they'll say it's flawed but it's getting tighter and it works in unison with other methods got some better drop it but when the better is just basically creationism and it's coming and it's in sync with a dude that thinks the flood went down i can turn the question right around and say how do you know because knowing is based on knowledge and if i know the full picture not the the straw man but the full picture the full narrative and i have that knowledge down then I can make an argument that's better than Kent Hovens and Copper Colored Cousins. Okay? And I can turn that question right around.